tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Python script with a Blender game engine. I'm going to show you how to make a sphere bounce around in 3D space. I'm going to start with a new file and to use the Blender game engine I'm going to go into the game logic layout. I'm going to change Blender render to Blender game. Uh, this window at the bottom is the logic editor window. I'm going to just zoom in using the mouse wheel and holding shift and the middle mouse button pan that so we are ready to create logic bricks. I'm deleting the cube and replacing it with a sphere mesh UV sphere and I'm going to have two balls bouncing around eventually so I'm going to call this one ball one. I'm going to add a sensor an always sensor and I'm going to connect that to a script. Uh, to create a new script I'm going to go to script templates and select game logic basic uh, and I'm eventually going to have two scripts, one attached to each ball. So I'm going to call this one ball one py. Now I'm going to add a controller, a Python controller, uh, connect that up and select my script, which will be ball one py. Now I'm going to edit the script. I'm going to delete all but the first two lines and add a print command and this will print the owner object, its position in the x direction. And before I do that, I'm just going to grab the sphere and have a look at its X position. It's now at 1.919. Now, if I run this script, where will it print the position of the owner object, the sphere? Uh, it will print it on the system console. Now, if you haven't got a system console, you display the system console or you can toggle it on and off in the help menu. So there's my system console. I start the game engine, press escape to stop it. And if I display the system console, it's saying the position of my ball is uh, 1.9186 which correct to three decimal places is 1.919 which is correct so that all works. The position of the sphere was only printed once. Now there is a button here if I click it it goes darker and if I hover over it says activate true level triggering pulse mode. Now with the always logic brick, it sends a signal every time a frame is entered in the game engine and the game engine runs at 60 frames per second. Now we're in pulse mode. Now if I run the Blender game engine, press escape to stop and look at the system console. The exposition has been printed many times however long the game engine was run for 60 times per second. We need to do that, that needs to be grey for the next bit where I'm going to see if not only can we report the position of the sphere but we can alter the position of the sphere. And I'm simply going to add plus equals 0.1 And that should add 
0.1 blender units onto the X position of the sphere every frame, 60 frames per second. So we now see what happens and off the ball goes. If we're going to make the ball bounce, we'll have to reverse the direction of the movement of the sphere. I'm going to create a variable called dx for change in x. I'm going to set it equal this time to minus 0.1. And when we run that, the sphere should travel uh, right to left. But I'm not going to use a variable. I'm going to create an object property. So we have the name of the object, square brackets, and then in quotes, the name of the property. It works the same, but there are lots of advantages to using an object property over using a variable. To make the ball bounce, I'm going to add an if statement. If the position of the sphere gets greater than a given value, let's say 8, then we want the change in x to become negative. minus 0.1. Now does that work? The ball goes off but it freezes when it gets to position 8. So why did the ball stop? Well this line was changing x, adding the change in x until the value got above 8 at which point the change in x was made negative but the problem is this line. This line is run every frame and every frame it makes the change in x positive. So we need to change the code so that this line is only run once. An if statement something like this. If not a property called init in object owner then create it. Then we can have uh, anything, any other properties we want to initialize and this will only be run theoretically once. So let's see if that works. And there we have the sphere bouncing. As the program develops, there's becoming two clear sections. This section that is run once at the beginning, and this section that is run in every frame. So I'm going to define two functions. The first function I'll call init for initialize. And in Python, everything is inside a function if it's indented. And I'm going to define a function update. And we indent those. And then we must call the functions now that hasn't changed the code but it has structured it so the ball should and the reason why the ball didn't bounce I left off a colon at the end of the line there and there 
and now the ball should bounce and it does I want to make the ball bounce back and forth but before I alter the code to do that I'm going to put syntax highlighting on which is this button here which I should have done in the first place uh, I'm going to change the 8 to 4 now to make the ball bounce back and forth I need a more complicated condition here so I'm going to copy this move the cursor and right click and paste uh, I'm going to combine two conditions with logical or so I need uh, an opening bracket or and a closing bracket now if X gets greater than 4 we want to change the sign of the change in X but when X gets lower less than minus 4 we want to change the sign again so how do we change the sign of uh, the change in X well if we do times equal minus 1 that will change the sign every time either of those conditions is met does it work yep there is the sphere bouncing back and forth opening the file that I started the tutorial with um, I've got two balls bouncing around and they're bouncing in all three dimensions so I've added change in Y change in Z now how do I add another ball well I could go to add mesh sphere but it's quicker and easier to duplicate one of the existing balls so if I do shift and D and create a new ball if I go to the properties of the new ball blender names it but I'm going to name it ball 3 uh, by duplicating we automatically got the logic bricks so that's much quicker now how do uh, at the moment that is attached to the script for the second ball so how I want another script so I'm going to first of all copy this script right click copy uh, add a new script I'm going to call this ball 3 dot py and paste in there and the code is the same for all three balls but I change the initial values if we make this one a bit quicker so a higher change values this ball the final ball should move the quickest okay uh, that script needs to be linked up there and now if I play the script the one blue ball is quite a lot quicker than the other two okay now they bounce around in 3d space but they do not collide with each other or with the other objects in the scene setting up collisions between them is for another tutorial uh, that's the end of this tutorial I'll put all the files at my website freemovies.co.uk at the Blender channel there thanks for watching and goodbye